the previous video, we went over all the tips and tricks for hanging IKEA kitchen cabinets. If you missed it, you can find it in the description below or in the card at the end of the video. Today, we will show you how to cut holes in your IKEA sink cabinet to accommodate the pipes that will be connected to your sink, as well as how to reinstall the water shutoff valves. I can tell you from personal experience that drilling a bunch of holes in a brand new cabinet can be intimidating and nerve wracking, especially if this is the first time you're doing it. But I believe we have devised a simple method that will give you the confidence to tackle cutting all the pipe holes without fear of damaging the cabinet. Sorry I jumped the gun and started removing the old shutoff valves without you. They are over 20 years old and in desperate need of an upgrade. But first let's take a moment to go over all the safety precautions before we proceed with the valve removal. Step 1. Before beginning any pipe repairs, turn off the water to the house. Step 2. If you have an outlet under the sink, turn it off to avoid any freak accidents caused by water splashing on live outlets. Step 3. Place some containers or buckets underneath the pipes you're working on. Even if the water in the house is shut off, the pipes will always contain some water. Step 4. Determine what you're going to do with the old valves. Will you replace them like we did, or will you take a chance and keep the old ones? Keep in mind that larger holes in the back of the cabinet may be required to accommodate older valves. And finally, Step 5. Before removing the old valves, measure the length of your current pipes from the wall to ensure that the new valves will not interfere with the new cabinet and the pipes don't end up being too short. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get back to the task at hand. Our old valves had a compression fitting that would not come off, so we used the pipe cutter to cut the pipe as close to the compression fitting as possible. Here are a few things to remember if you never used a copper pipe cutter before. Clean the pipe surface with steel wool before beginning the cut, and never over tighten the pipe cutter as this will deform the pipe. Slightly tighten it on the pipe and spin the cut wheel around several times. Every few spins, twist the tightening knob a quarter turn until the pipe is cut through all the way. With all the pipes prepped, we moved on to installing the feet of the sink cabinet so that we can use the laser level and other leveled cabinets already on the wall to set the proper height of the cabinet. I marked the first pilot hole around the longest protruding pipe on the wall using a tiny little pencil. In our case, it was the drain pipe, but with our technique, it doesn't matter which pipe you start with. We then flip the cabinet over to drill out the first hole of the drain pipe. Max tip, use the boxes that the cabinets come in as protective mats under the cabinet to keep it from getting damaged. We considered several options for drilling these holes. However, due to the thickness of this backer, we decided on the hole saw kit, which usually comes in good variety for standard holes we need to drill. With the drill set set to high speed, the tear out on the other side should be minimal with no pressure on the bit. Anytime you're using power tools, always let the tool do 99% of the work. As we were putting the cabinet against the wall to make sure the drain pipe holes line up, the baby boss stopped by to check on our progress. She is always a welcome distraction. After confirming everything was up to her standards, we moved on to marking out where to cut the rest of the holes for the water pipes. For this step, we have a little trick up our sleeve to make this process super simple. We used a piece of cardboard with the factory edge on the bottom and drilled a hole to match the size of the drain hole and then made sure that the holes matched up inside the cabinet. With the holes lined up, we marked the vertical axis on the cardboard to help us with the vertical alignment against the pipes later. We removed the cabinet once again and threaded the piece of cardboard onto the drain pipe till it pressed up against the other water pipes. Keeping the factory edge parallel to the floor, I added slight pressure to the cardboard. When you do that, the pipes leave indentations of where the rest of the holes need to be drilled out. I then circled them by hand just to make them more visible during drilling. As we were in the middle of the process, the camera for some reason overheated and turned off, so we lost some footage. But not to worry, I will do my best to recreate this for you in this 3D model. We placed the cardboard with the rest of the pipe markings onto the back ledge of the cabinet, lining up the drain holes and drilling out the remaining marked pipe holes. I was pleasantly surprised how well this worked. We moved over the cabinet back to the wall one more time to check for alignment and to mark out where to cut out the outlet access. As you can tell, the pipes line up great with the cutout holes. 
Now let's cut out this last outlet opening and finally hang this cabinet on the wall. Process for the outlet cutouts is a bit different. We used a spare outlet box to draw the outline of where the box will sit and drilled out the corners. Next, we used the cutoff wheel to connect those pre-drilled corners to complete the cutout. With this process, the edges end up rounded. So we went back and we used the blade to square them up. With all the holes cut, it's time to hang the cabinet on the wall for its final fitment. As you can see, everything fits great and lines up with the overhead cabinets above the sink. We toss on the split flange pipe covers. They're always our first choice because they can be easily replaced when they get old without removing a water valve. Speaking of water valves, we need to install new ones, so let's take a few minutes and cover that process. The new valve we are using is half inch compression inlet, 3 8 inch compression outlet, quarter turn angle valve. We like them because they're easy to use when shutting the water on and off, and they're always quicker than the old style twist knob. I started by inserting the nut and crush ring onto each pipe and quickly realized that I should be using something to protect the cabinet base in case I accidentally drop a valve or a wrench. So don't make this mistake and prep the area before you start. Here's a max tip. Before you buy the valves, think about everything you will be connecting to the valves besides the kitchen sink, like a fridge line for the ice maker or a food processor or a dishwasher so that you can pick up any splitters you may need on the first trip. Splitters are a lot easier to install before you put the valve on the pipe. In our case, we need a line for the food processor and the sink, so we're installing a 3 8 splitter for those appliances. Make sure you are using Teflon tape on all the threaded plumbing connections, unless otherwise specified by the manufacturer of the valves. With the splitter installed, push the valve onto the pipe till it's fully seated, and then hand tighten the nut. Keep in mind that the valves can slide around while you're tightening it and that's okay. But you do want to make sure it is seated all the way and facing in the correct direction before you tighten the valve nuts with the wrenches. Repeat the same steps on the next one and I will not bore you with the third one. But I will leave you with this final max tip. Depending on the size of the sink cabinet, it could be a tight space to work in. So you should always make sure you get all under the sink valve work done before the countertops arrive and you have a sink hanging over your head while you're trying to work. Also, don't rush to put the doors on if you need to install a food processor or a dishwasher after the counters are installed. In the next video, we will share our ideas for a unique dishwasher enclosure that carries the load of the counters at the end of the base cabinets. It looks pretty standard on the outside, but I think you'll be surprised by the creative assembly you find behind the cover panels. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end. Please leave your feedback or questions in the comments below. I read all of them. Like, subscribe, hit the bell to be there for the next one. Take care of yourself, your family, and most importantly, have a great day.